In this video, we're going to talk about espresso body. And by body, we don't mean how <clears throat> it affects your body, but rather the body of the espresso itself, the thickness, uh, the mouth feel. And it's a complicated thing because it isn't just how much stuff is in there making it thick. It's also crema and a viscosity and something else. We don't really know. A little bit of je ne sais quoi sometimes. Yeah, right? people try to measure body and they find that it doesn't really translate directly. Like it would think a higher TDS, more stuff in the water would give you more body. And it does, but that isn't the whole story. So when we talk about body, we're actually talking about a subjective taste on the tongue. Like it just feels thick. And the reason we're talking about it now is that in the original review by John Weiss of the Decent Espresso Machine, he mostly liked everything about it, except he felt that it wasn't very good at producing shots with a lot of body. It was much better at clear shots. And the, the general thinking being that clarity goes in this direction, body in this direction, and they're enemies, that you, you basically can't have body and clarity, and you can't have clarity and body. But this machine can do all sorts of things, all sorts of different flow rates and temperatures. And shouldn't we be able to do body? Shouldn't we be able to emulate body? And so in the past seven years, I'd say this has been the single biggest fixation among decent espresso owners is how do we get more body out of our espresso? And I would say it's specifically medium to dark roast people. Yeah, I would say so. And um, this was very in line with what I was trying to trial out. Like, could we get light roast with body? You know, I- And did it taste good? Yeah, that, that, was, that was what came into question. And, <laughs> and it's, it's what John referring to in that they're, they're antagonizing sort of, you know, characteristics where if you want the body and you've got a light roast, well, you can get the body, but you might not necessarily get the flavor characteristics that you're looking for. Um, while the flavor's in there, um, you just can't differentiate unless you start diluting and then, you know, you're, you're diluting the body, which is not the goal that we want to achieve. And um, in, in trialing out a few light roasts, naturally going to medium and then medium dark, you find a lot more success with the darker roasts. Um, but that's not to say, you know, you can use certain techniques to help you there, especially with medium, medium light roasts. Um, but I would say, you know, you're either one camp or the other, you know, sometimes you might be in the middle depending on your drink style, but usually you're more clarity or more body. We did find with one of those geishas from Colt Road that it was a silky body. I wouldn't call it a thick body, but there was a little bit on the tongue that was actually really surprising. So in that journey to try and increase the body in the espresso, a few things have been discovered. So first is that the speed of pre-infusion directly affects the body. Namely, when I had programmed all the original profiles in the Decent, I went with a slower pre-infusion of four milliliters per second. And the reason I did that is that it meant that I had less channeling. The, the puck wasn't hammered at the start with a lot of water, which was my experience with a traditional machine before the Decent. And a lot of my shots would end up terrible with that approach. Going to a four milliliters per second flow rate was about the flow rate that a puck could absorb of water, and it meant that gentle wetting meant a lot less channeling, and I also got much clearer shots. So that was the way that we, we went with that. What got discovered is if you amped up the flow rate, and initially the decent was only limited to six mils per second um, initial flow rate, or six mils per second total flow rate, through a firmware update, we up that to eight, and you can creep up to like 8.8 .8 mils per second, sometimes nine, and that really has a big impact on body. So slamming that puck hard seems to, um, I guess, make a puck that's denser. We don't really know exactly why. The espresso comes out sooner as well, but it's definitely thicker. So that was number one. And then number two, which turned out to be massive, was the headspace over the puck. And what I'm talking about here is I've got a porter filter with coffee in it. And I'm talking about when you lock it into your espresso machine, you've got what's called a shower screen. It's like a mesh and it pushes down the puck or there's a little bit of gap above it. If you have a gap, the puck is able to swell when it pre-infuses. And that swelling is a blooming or an even wetting. And it is really conducive to greater clarity and more even wetting and less channeling. And it's not just me. Socratic did those tests as well. 
and they found the same thing on a La Marzocca machine was a greater headspace was better for light roasts. However, it turns out that really clamping down on that really increases the body. And we think that's because when you put a shower screen on the espresso coffee puck and you give it water, that puck wants to swell and then it can't. And so it basically mashes across all sides and um, it fills any gaps. It becomes very homogenous. It tends to channel less because you're just squeezing it. And then your shots are dramatically thicker. So I would say that was the biggest thing. And we didn't initially change the decent because um, people like Swarks um, and some others offered kits for the decent that you could buy. And they would put spacers in there and you could choose just how extreme you wanted to, to decrease that. And if you went really extreme, you got super thick espressos. But at a loss of clarity. Yeah. yeah. And I think you've played with the spacer kits. Yeah, I have touched upon it a little bit. And um, it's really good if you find a coffee that works like really well with it without having to play around with your dose. Um, and it, it, it's quite convenient for you if you are sticking to a very benchmark recipe. And that's what I really like about it. Um, but, you know, you have to be mindful when you're switching roasts and how that will affect that particular roast. And, you know, some minute adjustments according to your dose will be needed. So while it is more convenient and you have a slightly more flexibility, you just have to might be a lot more mindful on, on that particular variable. Um, so, yeah. Something to keep in mind with that headspace is that it's much harder to have less headspace than more. So if you don't have much headspace, but you want more, you just switch to a larger basket. You go from 15 gram basket to 18 gram basket with the same amount of coffee and you'll just have headspace. And with that in mind, we have been gradually lowering our headspace from 1.0 to 1.1 was the biggest change where it was several millimeters that we reduced. And now in the latest version that's coming out, 1.4.4, we're now following the E61 standard and we've dropped even a little bit more space off these. And again, that's because we're finding that if you want that body, then you can get that with reduced headspace. And if you want more clarity, you just use a larger basket. So it kind of gives you the best of both worlds. But wait, there's more. <laughs> uh, lever machines really make very thick syrupy espressos. And, and they're kind of amazing. And we thought maybe one reason is that lever machines almost universally have much smaller baskets. This is a 58 millimeter basket. Uh, 54 from Delacorte is uh, uh, one of the common sizes. 53 going down to as little as 44. I think I've seen a 41 yeah. basket. And, and the smaller the basket, the thicker the coffee puck. And you get a lot more body. I mean, just insanely more body. So... I sent Paul on an adventure to source all the baskets we could find that had shapes that started wide and ended narrow. And you can see these are different end sizes. And here's another one as well. And we're only showing you the ones that were the end result because what Paul did is a whole matrix doing testing and tasting to try and see where he could get more body, but not sacrifice clarity and flavor. So at this point, that's the introduction over. I turn it over to Paul, who's done all this research. And uh, just so you know, I have never had any of these espressos from these baskets. Um, this is going to be a, a truly blind taste testing where Paul has these three baskets that he's recommending we add to the decent line. And we'll see what I think. All right. So I think it's uh, what an introduction, and <laughs> I have to say I had tens of different baskets, and to be honest, a lot of them didn't produce very good results. But the ones that we chose in here, um, I felt that adds to your workflow in that you know you don't have to be as mindful of your prep. Um, they're easy to work with, and they seem to be very flexible, um, especially the 14 grams one, which you can interchange with milk and also drink black. Um, so that was a really cool thing I discovered. Um, but um, as I'm discussing, let's pull a 15 gram shot, um, so, just as a comparison. Yeah, I was kind of floored, and I want to see if this is actually the case, is um, some of the light roasts, Paul was claiming less channeling and just as good flavor. 
which doesn't sound like it should. Is it that? Like it's 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 free. It's wonderful. Yes. Is, it, is that going to happen? Now, uh, the the reason why I, I I was I said I mentioned this to you privately, and I said I was stuck in the middle a little bit, and I was kind of like trying to find inspiration on how to get a good shot, and and this is when I looked into history. And basically looked into more the Italian style, their doses, and, and what was the recipe back in the day? And can I sort of get close to that, but on the DU1? So what that naturally did was it made me use a lot lower ratios than we're used to. Um, so, you know, in, in, in the factory, we're used to extracting one to two ratios, maybe even one to three, uh, maybe even a raw lange extraction at five to one um, if it's a, a really nice light roast. But when it comes to a one to one or maybe a normal at one to 1 1.5, um, that those type of shots are rarely done here because we just feel like we're wasting coffee. But that's not to say that that sort of style has its uses. I found that during these experiments with these uh, smaller diameter at the bottom baskets, at uh, I believe it's 53, um, but the whole area size is slightly smaller than that, I found much more success at the lower ratios. And what I found was that the lower ratios just let that clarity pop out a little bit more, but still have that aftertaste in sort of the body that it produces. So Let's take a look at the screen here. So this is a 16 second shot. Yes. And essentially it's the default profile you've got, mm -hmm. but I see that you greatly increased the flow rate. Yes. Um, and you also, uh, you've got a little bit of a decreasing temperature profile in there too. Yeah. Um, so for the reason we're uh, using such small doses, um, in going below 12 grams in some of the baskets, I found that temperature had a significant impact due to the puck depth. And I think that the higher temperature uh, on a 15 gram basket, when I went down to a 12, for example, really affected the sort of harshness and, and almost produced an uncomfortable shot. Okay. So that was a good insight into, you know, the dose you have and how it affects temperature. Um, but the body was definitely um, significant in terms of comparing it to the 15 gram basket. So on this, I mean, there's no crema. Mm -hmm. So the crema is not fooling me, no. the body. But it does have a kind of, it's got a lot of body to it. Yes. Um, so is this kind of a, a conservative basket? Like this is not an extreme one? Uh, I would say this is more of the clarity side mm -hmm. um, and is, is kind of because of the, the 15 gram dose, I would say it's an intermediate in terms of puck prep. Like the, the puck depth that you have or start with will give you a head start. So if it is deeper, it will be much less chance of channeling and less will be required from your, your actual prep itself. Um, but what we found with this one with the 14 gram basket due to its shape, um, the shape of the basket actually improves the puck integrity of the lower dose. So um, that doesn't matter so much with those type of baskets. Um, and that's what we've generally seen with these narrower tapered edges is that the increases puck integrity um, and with a shorter ratio, you can still get that clarity to pop out. Okay. I mean, flavor wise, what I'm getting in this and hopefully we'll be able to compare it. Um, this for me is like a single origin dark chocolate. Mm. Okay. And I don't mean there's any burn notes. There aren't any burn notes in it, but a single origin has got a lot of tang to it. Yes. A single yes. origin chocolate is what I'm talking about. So there is absolutely a city. There's pretty bright fruit in it. Yes. Uh, there is very noticeable, both middle and darker chocolates mm -hmm. in there, but it's really balanced. Yeah. There's not a lot to drink. <laughs> yes, yes, that's very true. Um, it's just a few sips, and let's see, this was 14 in and 15 out? Yep. Okay, so it's a one-to-one -one shot is, is what you've done. Part of what I had tasked Paul with is that our 7-gram and 10-gram baskets, they don't work very well, just to be blunt. They are based on the older idea that the baskets just get smaller and smaller, and less tall and less tall, but they're the same diameter. And the basic problem we encounter is that below under 15 grams, that the puck is now so thick that it tends to channel. And the only time we ever had luck with those small uh, seven gram baskets, for example, was if we tamped it right in the center and did lower pressure. 
So I wanted to know, was there a way to make single shots with the decent? Because I'm always making doubles. I'm drinking doubles. It's a lot of caffeine. But in the Italian tradition, which a lot of people subscribe to, they have several espressos during the day. And the espressos are significantly smaller, right? A seven or even 10 gram dose is not unusual. So this is 14 in, 15 out. Uh, it's just four sips. Yeah, yeah. And um, the way it's designed to have a thicker body, that aftertaste should last with you for like, you know, an hour or so. Um, and, and Yeah, the TDS is not through the roof either. This is not an espresso that um, is like a super concentrated ristretto. If you told me that this was just a split double, I'd believe you because it tastes balanced. Yes, yes. Um, even if you have a slightly lighter roasted bean, um, because it is lighter, you can get away with a slightly slower flow rate and extend your pre-infusion longer. And what you'll find is that acidity gets tamed a little bit more and is sort of more in line with the style of an Italian espresso. So that was also an inter interesting note that I also saw in that, you know, what I mean by the flexibility of this basket doesn't have to be full on dark. Mm -hmm. um, you can go a little bit lighter and just play around the flow rate to make it more balanced. I'm going to pull out the interface because I'm going to show people um, what Paul did. So here's the, the profile, okay, that he's got. He's got an 8 milliliter per second flow rate, and he also has a temperature that starts at, looks like, 84 and then goes down to 78. So let me show you how one would do that. Here it is here, but we're going to go back and we're just going to pull in the default profile there. Okay. Now there's two things you need to change. Here is the flow rate. And if I drag that up to max, now I've got a faster start. And then if I tap here, I can change the temperature. Did we say 82 was the start? Yep. 82. Okay. And if I tap on the thermometer, I get different steps here. And so I can tap here and you start at 82 and you went to uh, 80 on the pre-infusion and hold. Okay. So 82 to start. Yep. And then 80 there and then down to uh, also 80 on the hold and then okay. 72 on the D. Great. 72. Wow. Yeah. I mean, but it's kind of mind-boggling. We can do these yeah, big temperature it's, changes. It's pretty so bad. there we go. There's the temperature changes. And that's essentially how you program a shot. Um, if you are wondering, what's this interface for? It seems kind of simplistic. In fact, on forums, you might have heard, oh, no one uses this interface before anymore. Everyone uses the advanced interface. <laughs> well, um, at three-stage espressos with pre-infusion, a rise, and a hold, um, and then a decline is is very, very common that it is, and it makes great coffee. There are, of course, more complicated espressos out there. The downside to them is if you want to play with the program, you better know what you're doing. Whereas this straightforward interface with one, two, and three stages and sliders, you can change a few things. Here we change temperature profiling and the pre-infusion, and we've got a radically different shot. Um, do you think that the technique you're discovering here really needs the lighter temperature? Did you try these with the default 92 Celsius, 10 Celsius hotter? I did, um, but that was with a longer ratio, not the one-to-one. -one. I suspect that if I did have uh, more time with the one-to-ones, because in all fairness, I was just, you know, we've been drinking this bean for a long time, and flavors just popped out that I just never placed mm. before. So um, these beans are often, I would say, perfectly nice. <laughs> yes, yeah. they're perfectly nice. And, and this is now exceptional. And I'm actually, I'd say this is one of the best espressos I've had yep. just in just plain Italian style. This, this is delicious. Um, and there's a couple things going on. There's the basket and the temperature, which are both weird and not anything I've experienced with. So I would say probably if we do sell these baskets, we need to have some different profiles that are optimized for them so that you guys don't have to dig into Paul's brain. <laughs> are we ready for another shot? Yeah, yeah, of course. We will go from bigger to small. So let's try out the 14 gram baskets. And what's nice about these baskets, not out of design or intention, is that the grind settings seem to align without too much adjustment, which is quite nice when you're switching between baskets a lot. Ooh, that's nice and thick. 
This is going to be also a one-to-one -one ratio? Yes. Okay. And I don't see any channeling. These shots are really clean. Yeah. And uh, you will find with these baskets, that's a very similar trait with these tapered edges in that it really increases the puck integrity and not much change to the grind, right? So I, I didn't even move it one notch. We were, you know, same dose, but uh, the whole size of difference. Probably around 54. Yeah. Kind of a blackstrap molasses on the nose. Yeah. So it's a little bit more slippery. Uh, Considerable more body. Yes. More city too. Yes. Um, than the, the first shot. So where would, what would you be aiming for, for, for this? Why, why would you use this basket? Um, this would be, um, I don't know if you noticed the aroma for me anyway, was um, a bit more complex. Mm. Um, I could definitely tell that there is a, a little bit less clarity in the shot compared mm. to the 15 gram from the smell. Mush. Yeah. Um, but I do also get complexity in there, like sort of uh, skin of a berry. There's some yeah. sort of fruit in there, but I can't. I can't get out what it is. Yeah, I get kind of citruses. Yeah. Uh, a whole variety of both pith and skin and juice. Um, and um, I would say that the overall goal of this is not to compromise on the aroma compared to the 15 gram basket, mm -hmm. but also, you know, we're, we're probably obviously trying to create a balanced cup. Um, so for example, this one, the acidity was a little bit higher Maybe perhaps we could have drawn it a little bit longer in terms of ratio. Um, but um, I think just from tasting that, I wouldn't be too disappointed if I got served that in a, in a shop. Um, I think the acidity is actually in line with a lot of places, mm -hmm. um, but it's not offensive. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, yeah. so, so definitely the 15 gram basket one, and I'm happy for that, was just the standout shot. I thought it was fantastic. It had great width of flavor. Um, a lot of complexity. This, uh, about the same mouthfeel. I actually think the 15 mm. gram gave me some good mouthfeel there. I suspect that lower temperature is, is what's giving me a really nice clarity yeah. on the 15 gram medium dark roast. This is tasting more classic to me, and that's not in a, in a bad way. Mm -hmm. um, there's no burnt notes. There's no defects going on. Um, and if you told me they were different beans, I wouldn't be surprised. Right. It's definitely the same territory. I'd be in the same place in the world, <laughs> different competing roasteries. Uh, but, okay, so what's next? Okay, so this one um, is quite similar and will use a very similar flow, uh, uh, grind setting, but is actually a little bit slower flowing. Um, so this one definitely produces a much slower, slightly slower flow rate. So this is the this is the smallest diameter of the bunch, right? Yes. Okay. So we should expect this to have the least clarity mm -hmm. and the most body. Yes. If the theory is correct. The one nice thing about the uh, <laughs> the pumps on the decent is you can, without looking at the screen, get a feeling for the shot. Uh, I can tell this is a mellow shot. It's, it's uh, first of all, it's high pressure because the pumps are quieter at high pressure. And, um, and it was petering about at a consistent speed, right? It wasn't speeding up, slowing yes, down. Yes, yes. This time we did reach the sort of range that I'm looking for for this basket. And, and that's quite evident with the tiger striping on there. A little bit more on the nose. So it's got sort of more the the sort of baker's cocoa on there. And a little bit of fruit. <laughs> They're both really good. I'm not going to say that there's a world of difference between them. Between them. Sweetness makes it for me. Um, when you say sweetness here, are you saying you, I literally taste some characteristics like caramel, or is it reduced acidity for you? Um, actually, it's it's more of the sweetness is now taming my the acidity in there. So, so there's not any really sugar in here. That's why. Yeah, I ask. yeah, yeah. So when you say sweetness, what do you mean here? Yeah. So. Um, the way I assess sweetness is not necessarily the flavor of sweetness that I'm tasting, but how it is reacting with the acidity and the feel in my mouth. And sweetness to me is kind of not quite like a reaction as if you put aluminum foil in there. That's a pretty sort of acidic, sort of more, more acidic light reaction, but it's more sort of warming and it grows on your palate um, and then the acidity dies away. So um, it's a little bit hard to explain. Um, but is easier when you definitely have those caramelly sort of, you know, description notes and people tag onto that and associate that feeling. 
Um, so the way I think about sweetness is a bit different. Mm. Um, I think of it as essentially fooling my brain that when there's one flavor, there should be sugar. So in this case, I'm tasting kind of a medium caramel, not a light caramel, but mm. a medium one, not a dark. And with a medium caramel, like say the sauce with sticky toffee pudding. Oh yeah, that's yeah, yeah. that's the world I'm in. And sticky toffee has a sauce that's quite sweet caramel, and that's exactly what I'm tasting here. So for me, it's like oh, that's sweet because it has a flavor profile associated with sweet things. It also has an acidity that's not out of control, but there is some acidity. Yes, yes. I don't think there's actually less acidity than before, uh, but this tastes sweeter to me because of the presence of that medium bodied caramel. Right, I see, yes. Yeah. That's uh, me, that is the evil world of coffee that we have not <laughs> standardized what these words mean, which is why I was asking yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've heard people say of a light boat, light um, roasted coffee, that's really sweet. And, and it, it's not, it just didn't have much acidity to it. Right, yes. And uh, because there's no caramel, there's nothing in yeah, that that yeah, is yeah. in the world of, of sweet. And so it can also mean that. To be honest, I was a little bit frustrated for a while. <laughs> I'll admit that, John. Um, but I think yeah. the temperature finding that was the unlock for that. Yeah. Uh, because these are basically nine bar shots with a slight decline, and uh, but they're at much lower temperature, so they're they're fairly traditional, but with stable temperature uh, decline in temperature profile. I, for me, this is the first instance I've seen of lower temperatures and temperature decline that's just clearly doing something valuable. Usually when I taste people playing with temperature profiles, it's hard to really say that was better, that was not. Um, so congrats. I think we are going to definitely start selling those two baskets. Oh, nice. I, I thank you for the hard work. <laughs> I'm a good contrast. So that is our 15 gram basket. And then that is the intermediate one, I believe. Yes. And then this one here is the most extreme. Thank you for watching this live tasting of several months of Paul's work of baskets with narrower bodies, which we think we've solved the, the main issues with body. We think we can really deliver great clarity and good body, which I didn't know we could do. Uh, so that's a good day. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. No problem. Thank you very much, John. <laughs> um, I think I was pretty shocked that you did not want to sacrifice clarity yeah because when you 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 made a shot for me god i don't know like a year ago <laughs> and and they were super consistent like they were just lever shots that were just pure middle of the road chocolate yeah. never in the city and i could see a cafe doing really well with it but we were both going man this is super boring yeah yeah and he was i think it was me finding my feet on the day one and and you know obviously trying out what people other people are trying seeing what works seeing what didn't work mm -hmm. and and it was only really until you gave me this project that i was like okay let's let's get into let's this thing this. And, and, yeah. and see what we can do and and i honestly didn't know whether i, I was gonna make it at the end yeah. of it um it but, took a long time and there were yeah. pages and pages of notes <laughs> and, and paul was doing these sca clarity ratings and such. <laughs> i was like oh, okay he's he's gone Pull into this. Yeah, you know, I was testing so many baskets, and I was like, I'm, I'm not going to remember all this. Mm -hmm. So I had to, you know, structure it in a way that, you know, I could project it as results to you and give you feedback at the same time, but also for me to understand what was going on. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, for me, I'm very flavor driven, and, and obviously it's antagonistic characteristics. Mm -hmm. But you know, has anyone tried to get clarity and, and you know, find middle ground with body? Um, so, you know, I took it on and luckily it came out with something fairly, fairly good. And so you did try some baskets. This is a question no one's asked yet, but I'm going to ask it. Um, you did try some baskets that had like tiny diameters yeah. for really small doses. Uh, and we're not trying any of those here. Mm -hmm. uh, those were for really low doses, like seven or eight grams. So yeah. what was wrong with those? Why aren't we tasting that now? Um, because I just felt like it didn't improve on what was already around. And while it did solve the problem of over certain aspects over technique and recipe and you know temperature and all that other variables, it didn't really add anything on to me to really pursue that basket and really recommend it. Um, I think that uh, you know you'd find much more success with uh, you know a 15 gram basket and lower dosing that um, and possibly getting less channeling as compared to a, a smaller whole basket with such a low depth. 
Um, but, you know, as I'm flavor driven, it was just, you know, it, it didn't excite me as much. And they were generally quite low acidity. Um, and overall, it's just not the style I was looking for. So, um, so it didn't really add anything. I just thought didn't really improve anything on pro, um, in the form of the technique. Mm. Um, and it wasn't really my style. So that's kind of why I didn't pursue along that route. So you just didn't want to compromise on the quality of the drink. Yeah. So we could go down to maybe a seven gram basket, but it'd be a boring espresso. Exactly. And we're not called boring espresso. <laughs> we're close to it, but we're not boring yeah, espresso. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and what if you, we've got this beautiful machine and all these things we can play around with. I just didn't want to produce something that was just kind of not really improving on anything. So instead of doing, let's say, a 7 gram in, 14 out, mm. you're doing a 12.6 in, 14 out, is that right? Uh, uh, yes, yes, 14 out, okay. 15 out. Yeah. And so the minimum dose, essentially, you're recommending to make outstanding espresso is 12.6 grams. Yeah. So that's how it is, folks. Um, can't make fantastic espresso lower than that. But it doesn't mean you have to drink 28 gram monsters. <laughs> uh, you're at the out cup. I uh, have 14 grams is the same as that Italian seven in 14 out, except that it tastes better. Okay.